appropriate God, we worship you. Hallelujah. Be that exalted and magnified, be that glorified for who you are, who you represent, and who you will always be. We honor Shakata. We give you all glory and adoration. We exalt, we magnify you. Have your way, O oh Lord. Have your way, Father. God bless you again as we continue on this marathon. It is coming to the presence of God daily. Many of us have built some spiritual muscles since we started this prayer. And we have been able to overcome some odds. Because at these hours we come and we start to speak. Oh, Labaga Shikataba, Makoto Robo. We give you all glory and adoration. We exalt, we magnify you. Yes, Lord, have your way, O oh Lord. Have your way, Father, that your name will be glorified. Bless it. Bless his holy name. Yes, Lord, he has done great things. We have to worship him today. Yes, Lord, bless him, bless him right now. Bless him for he is God. Give him all exaltation, give him all adoration. All power belongs to him. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We are talking about living sacrifice today. Every child of God is one. Many of us have taken it to the next dimension, but we are all living sacrifice. Lively stones, that's who we are. Oh, Rabaga Shikataba, Likana, Mama, Mama, Mama. Bazoko Torobo, Rikata Shikataba. Yes, Lord, we worship you. We exalt, we magnify you. Hallelujah. You have done great things. Thank the God that can do all things. Exalt his holy name, magnify him for he is God. Give him all exaltation and honor. Makotorobo, Rebagashi Katababa, Nebagashi Kotobo, Rikana Mamama. He has done some awesome things, some wonderful things. He has done some excellent things. Can somebody say hallelujah? Just I want you to appreciate God today. Give him all exaltation. We are grateful, oh Lord, we are grateful for the opportunity that is being thrown at us to be in your presence. The Bible says, in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. At the right hand of the Father, there are pleasures forevermore. Have your way, O Lord, have your way, Father, that your name will be glorified in the name of Jesus Christ. There is none like you, O Lord. There is none that will be compared unto you. From generation to generation, you remain at the same. You are God all by yourself. We are grateful for life. We are grateful for healing. We are grateful for prosperity. We are grateful for advancement. We are grateful to be in your presence. Oh, Lord, give us utterance today. May we speak not of ourselves or speak not in the wisdom of man, but the wisdom of God. That the Spirit take over our vocal cord, possess our being, use us as a tool, use us as a vessel of honor to present yourself to thy sons and daughters. Lord, help us to appear to you daily as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you, for this is our reasonable service. We bless you, Lord, we worship you. We give you all glory and adoration. We give you all exaltation. Have your way, O oh Lord. Have your way, Father. That your name will be glorified in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Magasikata Barikata Shukotobo. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Begin to worship Him. Lord, we are grateful. We are grateful for life. We are grateful to be all of our among the ones that you look upon your upon today and see us. We are grateful to walk in the path of God. 
We are grateful, oh Lord, to be where you want us to be. Thank you, Jesus. We are grateful for the things that we have not received also. The Bible says, in all things, give thanks and praises unto the Lord. Let everything that has breath, praise God. That's what the Bible says. As long as you have breath in you, you have to praise him. In the morning, noon, in the evening, and in the night. He is God all by himself. There is nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing that is he cannot do. That's just what I'm going to say. God is possibility. So I can't use any other word but that. God is possibility. He is life. He is light. Oh, makatara bababa. Let the light of God shine upon you. God say we are light also. Because God cannot be seen because of the, the level of the, 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 the dimension of the furnace of the fire and the light that is in him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. So let's go straight. We are talking about being a living sacrifice today. Living sacrifice. Oh, yes, Lord. We we'll just go to the word of God in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. The Bible says, I beseech you, brethren, therefore, by the mercy of God, mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Every child of God is a lively stone. We are all living sacrifice as long as we present ourselves. Because everything that goes through the altar dies. But because we pass through the altar, we come back alive. God said we are a living sacrifice. That is when you go through the altar every day, like a sheep that is going for the slaughter. The spirit of God will dwell upon you, will come upon you, will overpower you, will overshadow you. And bring you out the new life, the life of Jesus Christ. You come out on the other side, being Christ. The Bible says Christ as us, the hope of glory. Because as when the spirit possesses our being, and this, I don't know what I would call it, the level of ray of light that will come upon man, it will overpower you and you come out the light of God. So we have to present our body daily unto God as a living sacrifice. Jesus said, if any man shall come after me, let him, hallelujah, Pick up his cross daily and follow me. Carry your cross and follow him daily. Go through that path as a sacrifice. Every day you get up, you are a living sacrifice. He said, and be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of thy mind uh, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So once you are you have gone through that level of radar and heat. The light shines upon you. You are now a new person. You, you, are not be, you are not coming in the same form as you used to be in the world. You are, you are transformed into a new person. And that's where you begin to prove that is good and prove the acceptable, acceptable and the perfect will of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. So I want you to come to him today as a living sacrifice. Come. Come with all appreciation, all exaltation, all glory, all honor. Hallelujah. Because we are going to come as a seasoned salt. Colossians chapter 4, verse 6, the Bible says, let your speech be also with grace seasoned with salt that you may know how you ought to answer every man. Let your speech a lot of Christians and when they talk to you they say ah if it was when I was in the world you don't have to go back there. You are not there anymore. If I was still that man I could have shown you or tell you this. No. You don't have to. You are a living sacrifice. Let your speech be also with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know 
how you ought to answer every man. Let your speech be always with grace. That means when people throw things at you, 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 you respond with grace. You respond as someone that has met Christ, someone that is carrying the image of God. The Bible says, let no man trouble us, for we bear in our body the mark of Jesus Christ. So if you carry that mark, ah, you don't go back and say, I, if it was, I could have or should have. No. That kind of part. Your speech should always be with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer every man. This is the wisdom that is from above. Because you are not yourself anymore. You are living for him. John chapter 1 verse 4. He said, in him was life. And the life is the light of man. And the light shines in darkness. And darkness cannot, will not, shall not comprehend it. So you are coming out not as yourself. You carry an image. There's a trading of places. You are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Far above principalities and powers. Because in Christ is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Hallelujah. And the Bible says Jesus is the head of the principalities and powers. So we don't have to go to the gutter with the enemy or go down to the pit with him. We have to stay above. For he that cometh from above, John chapter 3, verse 31, is above all. It's above trials and tribulation. That doesn't mean that they will not show their ugly faces, but you will always overcome them. It's above sin. That this sin that will not come, but you always overcome. There's always a window of escape. There's always a door, opportunity to excel, to represent heaven very well. So, but we have to daily come as a living sacrifice. I beseech you that you present your body by the message of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice fully and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Every time your body is presented in the format and in the form that God ought that you present it, then you are acceptable, which is your reasonable service unto God. You are servicing God. We, God didn't create us to, to, to do anything but to praise him, to represent him, to present him. Either we are representing him or we are presenting him. It's two ways. Sometimes we present God, so people have to see God in us. Sometimes we represent him by what we do. Hallelujah. You have to be able to know how to do both at the same time. We can walk and chew gum at the same time. Oh, my Kataraba. Bible says, let this be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus Christ. Are you ready to pray today? My Kataraba. Today is the day we are going to take it easy. David said this at 119, verse 11. He said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. When you are a living sacrifice, the word is in you. Because the word has become you. The word has taken over you. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. We need more of the word. We need more of Jesus Christ. Once the word comes in, in the word takes over, the word becomes flesh. So the things that you read and hear becomes alive in you. Like things like peace. So you don't hear peace anymore. You are peaceful and your home shall be peaceful. Righteousness will not be a word, but it's a, a, a lifestyle. You live right, do right by yourself and do right by others and do right by God. You shall do right by everyone. That is righteousness. Righteousness is not a big word, but right living. Doing the right things. That is righteousness. The Bible says the kingdom of God is not food, neither meat or drink, but righteousness. Peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. That is the kingdom of God. Righteousness. The Bible says, God sit on righteousness and justice. That's a God of righteousness. So thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. Ask God to release his word, to give you his word. Say so he sent his word and the word he left it. 
Hallelujah. Every sin, every sickness, every poverty, every infirmity. The word can heal you today. He sent his word. So I want to say verse 20. And the word healed me. I received the word and let the healing power of God come upon me right now. From the crown of my head to the sole of my foot. Say that right to yourself. I received the word and the, let the healing power of God come upon me from the crown of my head to the sole of my foot in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The word, thy word, have I hid in my heart that I might not see. Because I carry that word everywhere I go. That's why Jesus said, Oh, Baga Sikakaba. Also in the book of Psalm 119, verse 89, Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. That word is settled. When it's something is settled, you don't have to go re revisit it. You cannot revise it. You cannot remix it. It's there. The Bible says forever, not for some time, forever, for eternity. Hallelujah. Thy word is settled in heaven. So if the word of God is settled, and I have to find out those words that are settled. And apply them into my life because it's going to be the same thing. The word is settled in heaven, it shall be settled on earth. Say, Thy faithfulness is unto all generations, for thou hast established the earth and it abided. So, if thy word has settled in heaven, the word will shine upon the earth. The Bible says, The word shine upon darkness, and darkness cannot comprehend it. So, what are the words that are settled? You can begin to choose one for yourself. There are many words in the Bible. Healing is a word. And it's not going to be a word that you read, but you are healed. By this tribe of Jesus, the Bible says we are healed. Poverty is a word. It's not a word that you have to take. It's a word that you have to reject. Hallelujah. The Bible says, and none lack among them. None lack. So if none lack among them, I'm not going to lack anything. The God cannot deny any good thing to his children. The Bible says the Lord takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. Oh, prosperity is the word. That's Psalm 35, verse 27. The Lord takes pleasure. So you want God to have more pleasure, you give him prosperity. The Lord takes pleasure. You prosper, God is taking the pleasure. The glory goes back to you. So the Lord takes pleasure and you are going to stand for prosperity. Hallelujah. Salvation is a word. If we confess the Lord Jesus Christ and and believe in our heart that he died and resurrected, we shall be saved. So confession and believing is salvation. So I confess the Lord Jesus Christ, and I believe that he died and resurrected for my sins. I am saved. So those words become flesh in you. The word becomes flesh. Deliverance is a word. Upon my Zion shall be deliverance. And there shall be holiness. And the house of Jacob shall possess their position. So you pick up that word and you, you stamp it in your life and you begin to say it as you mean it until it becomes flesh. Your mentality, your mindset must begin to agree with what you say because your mentality is your method. And until you, you, are, you can be able to see it mentally, you cannot have it physically. So your mental picture becomes your actual future. You are living sacrifice, yes. Sacrifice die. But God said, I'm going to keep you alive. Just present yourself unto me daily in the altar as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, for this is your reasonable service. How many of us are ready to say, God, I present my body, my finance, my husband, my wife, my children unto you as a living sacrifice? We bless you, Lord. We worship you. We glorify, we adore you for who you are, who you represent, and who you will always be. Have your way, O Lord. Have your way, Father. That your name will be glorified in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, yes, Lord. So the Bible says Jesus spoke the word, a parable to them in Luke chapter 18, verse 1. But he said something. They said that men ought always to pray and not faint. 
So we are going to pray. And I'm going to give you some of the gifts of prayer. The times that you pray and it becomes effective. That doesn't mean that anytime you pray, God will not hear you. The Bible says, call upon me, I will hear and answer and show you great and mighty things. But there are times you call, it is exponentially, it is expedited. God will begin to fast forward it. They are all the, all the attributes to present prayer is there. Prayer is collected as a memorial. It comes to heaven as sense. As we speak to God in different dimensions and languages, asking different things, it comes as, 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 as order, as an aura into the heavens. And God begins to ooze and see it. Hallelujah. Men ought always to pray and not faint. The only way we interpret what we have believed, we communicate it to God, is through prayer. And there are seasons that prayers become more effective. And we're going to talk about this young man that was in the, in, in the pool of Bethsaida for 38 years. I don't know how long he, he, how old he was before he was taken there. But he missed some seasons. Why was that man there? It's not just because he has no man. That is part of it. But he did not understand the season. So every time the season of healing Every time there's a season of healing, he reacts to it. You have to be proactive. Don't react. Do things in order and prepare for success. Live ready. That's the word. Live ready. As a child of God, you have to live ready. Anything that happens, you are already there. You prepare. Don't make prayer to be a thing of emergency. And when the devil is already in your house, kicking down the doors, and you are calling help. Even though God will still answer you, but what if there's a delay? God is a king. You don't control him. But if you have put things in place, in perspective, angels of God are already on guard, check, checking things, taking care of you. You are committed, your property, your house, your business, your ministry, your job, your life unto God. If anything shows up, there are things that have been put in checks and balance. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 62, verse 6 and 7, I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem. So there are already watchmen that are waiting upon thy walls. So you will make mention of the Lord, talking about prayer again. He said, keep not like silence and give him no rest until God makes Bishop Ezobel a praise on earth. Yes, put your name there. Don't be jealous about me. Until he has made you a praise on earth. You have to be that man. Men ought always to pray and not faith. So how do you get to that place? So this man was there for 38 years. In John chapter 5, verse 1, it's after this, there was a feast of the Jews in, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem a sheep market of a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue, Bethsaida, having five porches. In this lay a great multitude of impotent folks, of blind halts, widowed, waiting for the moving of the water. This is a typical church. A church is a place that people come and get fixed. People get come and get spare parts of their body. People come and get rehabilitated. So don't expect to come to church and see all saints. You see criminals, yeah? You see thieves. You see rogues, prostitutes are in church. You see all kinds of people, adulterers, killers. The Bible says there are impotent folks in that place of blind halls, we that waiting for the moving of the water. But this is where caught my eyes in verse 4. For the angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. And whosoever then first, after the troubling of the water, stepped in, was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. So there was a season that they knew. If the man has been there 38 years, this man knows every season when the, 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 the water has been troubled. But he could not prepare. So every time the season comes, then he's running around trying to get in. And by then, people will go and step before him. But if this man was moving, when it was out of season, he was moving gradually, rolling. Whichever way he could get himself to the, to the pool, so that when the water is trouble, the water will touch him. But he was waiting so that when the season comes, we don't wait in this kingdom. You just do things. As you go along, you serve God. The Bible says, while we are waiting, we are going to praise him. 
While we are waiting, we are going to pray. While we are waiting, we are going to serve. While we are waiting, we are going to give. You do all these things proactively, preparing yourself for the time when God stretch forth his scepter of authority upon your family, upon your life. You are ready. It's not the time that you say, God, hold on. Let me come clean first. You are already ready. You are at where you're supposed to be. When God came down to the, to the cool of the day, Adam knew at the time that God will come. God called him, Adam, where are you? He was not there. So I heard your voice, Adam. Why are you running? He was not there. Oh, Makata. It was not about the sin. If he has stayed, God will heal him and cleanse him from that. But this man said, at the season, a certain season, verse 4, and the angel went down at a certain season. I want you to mark that place in your mind. So there was a season for the answer to prayers. People were there, all kinds of people, great multitude of impotent folk, of blind holes, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. That water moves at a certain season. And if you have been there maybe for a week or a month, you might have understood some seasons. You might have heard stories. If it has not happened when you are there, you will hear stories that the angel comes three times a year, four times a year, and you will now be able to have statistics to back it up. But now this man was there and the season came and went left. And the season came and left because he was reacting to the season. When you are in your time and your time crisscrossed with the time of God, a season will be created in your life. But a lot of people just wait for God's time, but they don't get ready for their own time. There, was, there must be a meeting point between your time and God's time for a season to be created. This is your season. Receive it. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, God's time is preparation meeting. Hallelujah. Opportunity. That's a miracle. When there's a preparation and there's a meeting of opportunity, they come together, miracle is created. Oh, Lord, have mercy, have mercy. Let us move forward. Look at what, how God, the Bible describes where God sits. First Timothy chapter 6, if you read from verse 15, we're going to read down to 18, but we, our focus is on verse 16. First Timothy chapter 6. You say, verse 15, he said, which in his time he shall show who is the blessed and holy potentates, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Verse 16, I want you to focus on 16. Who only had immortality, God had immortality, dwelling in the light which no man can approach unto, whom no man had seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Amen. God is seated in immortality, dwelling in light, the level of light that is where God dwells is covering his light. The Bible says, which no man can approach. Nobody can approach there. Unto whom no man had seen, nor can see, to whom be honor and power everlasting. Hallelujah. It's a God that we serve. God dwells in light. The Bible says, dwelling in the light. No man has seen him and can see him or can approach there. But we can get his presence. The light of God shines upon your family. God is not living in heaven as we sometimes we think. The Bible says the throne of God as a king is in the heavens. And that's where he brings judgment from. His court is there. So if the earth is where he put his foot and he sits in heaven, where is his head? Can you ask that question to yourself from time and answer it? Bible says God sits in the third heaven. So he just sits there. And he put, he make the earth his footstool. Oh, Laban, how big is your God? You cannot put it in context. How small is your problem? Is there any challenge that you have that can run from earth to heaven? Not just the heaven of the heavens, but the third heaven. Hallelujah. You are God all by yourself. We thank you, Lord, and we worship you. We give you all exaltation. We are going to pray. I want you to develop a, a habit of praying 
with the prayer gates. There are gates that open doors. Times like the man that was sitting at the pool. The Spirit of God comes at a certain season. Those are gates. When the Spirit show up at that season, things happen. Miracles begin to take place. There are gates that you have to understand. Especially when you are living here on earth, your communion with God must be on in the morning, the first hour, which is about 6 a.m. Jesus used that many, many times. Everything Jesus did was he communed with his father early in the morning. Mark chapter 1, verse 35, the Bible says, in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. He wakes up before anybody and go out and depart into a solitary place. So that when he finished praying, he comes out, he takes charge. The, the first hour, which is 6 a.m., is the time for communion. Communion time, communion hour. You go and commune with God. You just get up the first approach, the first expression, the first one you talk to is God. You begin to speak to him. You begin to commune with him. God told Job in Job that he said, have you commanded the morning knowing that your gay days are evil? Have you commanded the morning? You begin to set the day how you want it to be. By the time you show up, you are in charge of your day. Lord, we pray for our mornings this hour. Rise it up. Lord, let us have the ability and the capacity to stand and pray in the morning. Because of time, we are just going to run through it. Bible says, at the cool of the day, God comes down and speaks to Adam. Genesis chapter 3, verse, verse 8. Hallelujah. But 9 a.m. also is the third hour. It's a crucial time. It's a very, very great time. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 15, 25. Makotorobo Sakataba. The Bible says, and it was the third hour when they crucified him. The third hour is the time to subdue the flesh. All the hours was, speak, was rightly given in Matthew 20. The Bible says he came out at the first hour, hired some people. Prayer gates he came back at the third hour, 9 a.m. Came at the sixth hour which was about 12 noon. And he came again at the ninth hour. And he came at the 11th hour. He hired some people also. Jesus gave us the gates and the time when the spirit comes out. Are you ready to operate in that presence? At the third hour, the Bible said, and they crucified him. That was the time that you go and kill the flesh. Because in that morning, your body is trying to react to different things. Whatever you set from the third hour, which is 9 a.m. up till the 12th hour, or, or up till the sixth hour, which is 12th noon, you ca it can carry you for the day. Many businesses and work start by 9 a.m. That's why you hear the word nine to five. Sometimes you get there by eight or 8.45. But business is by nine in every nation. Everything is up and doing. That's when the strength is too much. That is the time that you subdue flesh. That's the time you are filled with the spirit. On the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2, if you read from verse 1, the Bible says, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the house where they were sitting. That was the third hour in the morning. They have done their devotion, they were just there. And the, the third hour, the Spirit came and subdued their flesh and gave them utterance in verse three. And they, were, and they appeared upon them cloven tongues like a, as a fire and it set upon each of them. The Bible says, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. It is the time of the feeling the feeling of the Holy Ghost, you, you are full of the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So at the third hour, 
if you can be able to subdue your flesh, you can be able to operate in the spirit. The third hour is when your flesh will try to react. You begin to subdue flesh. You kill that flesh that morning. And you can be filled with the Holy Ghost. God will begin to give us eyes that we present ourselves through prayer, a living sacrifice, coming into the presence of God, holy and acceptable. For this is our reasonable service. Let's just jump to the sixth hour. The Bible says the hour of intervention, so winning. That is when lives are being intervened. Jesus was crucified in the third hour. He cried. The Bible says he cried. He cried. He was there. John chapter 6. A woman came out. And Jesus met her. In John chapter 4, verse 6, the Bible called her the Samaritan woman. And they started talking about well. Look at verse 6. He said, now Jacob well was there. Jesus, therefore, being weary with his journey, sat thus on the well. And it was about the sixth hour. They commit a woman of the Samaritan to draw water. Jesus said unto her, give me to drink. They, they began that conversation that led to the woman calling the city. At the twelfth hour, at the sixth hour, which is 12th noon, people are already settled at their job or business. Some people, that is their break time where they go out and begin to talk. It's a time to do evangelism. So willing. This is a time to, to have intervention in the life of man. Jesus began to intervene in the life of this woman at about the sixth hour. The conversation went further and Jesus was able to get her. I just want to pull that. We, we don't have time to talk about the woman because of our time. We are going to pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord, we thank you. We worship you. We give you all glory and adoration. Have your way, O oh Lord. Have your way, Father, that your name will be glorified. In the name of Jesus. If you read the book of Acts chapter 10, when Peter was in Joppa and he was about to go and eat, and the Bible said it was called the hour of prayer. Um, in verse 9, he said, And tomorrow, as they went on their journey and drawn near unto the city, Peter went up on the house top to pray about the sixth hour. So he went there from the sixth hour, which is the time of intervention, to intervene. But he was there, the Bible, and he went, he was there up till the ninth hour. And God began to reveal things to him. So every time you want to intervene, you start by 12. And the Bible says he was hungry and could have eaten, but he fell asleep. He went into a trance and God began to speak to him. God began to speak to him about Cornelius. God began to tell him to kill and eat. The Gentiles are open because the sixth hour is a time to do intervention so will it. There's an opportunity in the Gentile world, go there and begin to get them into, hallelujah, into the kingdom. God was showing him everything. And by the time Peter finished and came out of the vision, wow, a man came to him called Cornelius. I will not permit us to go into all the dogmatic. Matthew chapter 27 also, verse 45. The Bible said, now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour. And on the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabbati. This is to say, God, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? And the Bible said in verse 48, straight away, they give his punch and fill with vinegar. Hallelujah. So it was a dark time. Jesus was dripping blood. From the sixth hour 
up to the ninth hour, three hours, blood was crushing. The Bible says from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour. It's beginning to go. It began to go. Hallelujah. The blood was dripping. That was the time he was intervening for the world. The sins of the world was given to him. He needed to win the whole world for God's soul of the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The ninth hour, Acts chapter 3. The Bible says, Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. That was when they saw a man at the beautiful gate and they healed that man. It's called the hour of prayer. Hallelujah. And it continues like that six to six again. But where did we begin today? Romans chapter 12, verse 1 is, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God that you present your body, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Every time you present your body, you die in the natural. You become Jesus Christ in the spirit, the natural. Because everything that goes through the altar dies. So we present our body as a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable. And it's a daily work. Let us pray. Father, we thank you today. We bless you, O oh Lord, for as many that have heard the word of God. Thy word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Let the word that we have heard and we have spoken and we have received not be an enticing word of a man. Lord, let the word bring healing. The Bible says you sent your word and your word healed them. I speak healing into your sons and daughters as we are coming as lively stones, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, help us to be in that environment of God. For the Bible says, in him we live, in him we move, and in him we have our being. You are our environment, you are the air that we breathe, you are the life that we live. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, and let the light that Jesus brings to the world shine in us and shine in our families, shine in everywhere that we are, that Darkness cannot comprehend it. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my God, Lord, I pray for your sons and daughters, everyone that is hearing the sound of my voice. Whatever is going on in their life, let God arise. The Bible says, Arise, shine, for thy light is coming. Let God arise today that all your enemies shall be shattered. In the name of Jesus Christ, we give you all glory and adoration. We bless you, Father. We worship you for it is done. In the name of Jesus, testimonies shall begin to come in them. Everyone that is expecting a miracle, receive miracle. Our God is a miracle worker. He can intervene even in tough situations. Whatever the thing is, give it to God in prayer. Men ought to always pray and not faint. Thank you, Lord, for you have made all things beautiful in your time. This is your time and season. Beautify everything. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to pray with you if you are here for the first time or you have been looking at us but you have not given your life to Christ. I just want to call you right now. See, just come to Jesus Christ. The word said in Romans chapter 10 verse 9, if we confess the Lord Jesus and believe in our hearts that he died and resurrected, we shall be saved. So I just want to to say after me right now. Lord Jesus Christ, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. And I believe in my heart that you died and resurrected for my sins. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Jesus Christ, come into my life. God bless you. Hallelujah. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.